Hey there everyone, welcome back to Data Science Building Blocks. This is Joe. Today we are going to look into the pandas library within Python. So this is our first video using pandas. It's like I said, a library. It's a very extensive, really important library, especially in the finance analytics data science world. So I often say you can almost get by just learning pandas first and how to interact with pandas in your IDE instead of just base Python. So this is a good way to build a foundation. And so we'll look into it here, type in Jupyter Notebook down here, or I'll try it a different way than I did last time. You can do it from your Anaconda prompt, Python DSVB. If you just type in Jupyter Notebook and select your DSVB version, it'll just launch for you. You don't have to go through this step, but Jupyter Notebook and click enter and then it will launch. So we will wait for that. And then we can navigate to where we have our DSPB documents saved. So mine's desktop DSPB. And we're going to use this life expectancy data set. And it's very important that you have this one. We downloaded it from Kaggle a while back, but I'm probably going to do the remainder of all the videos in this series using this data set. So let's make sure we have a CSV version of this to use going forward. And since we don't, I'm going to go to the file explorer, find where it lives, open it and save the raw tab, the data that we originally pulled in off of this XLSX file and then just make it a CSV file. So make sure your raw data life expectancy, if, if you did this uh, got it from Kaggle a while back with us. You should see something like this. If you don't have this, just go to kaggle.com and make a free account and download this life expectancy data set. And it should look like this, about 3,254 rows, exactly 3,254 rows. Um, but if you got it, just do file, save as, put it in the same place, DSBB, and we'll change it to comma delimited click save, you're going to get a bunch of warnings now. Just keep clicking OK and yes. What's happening here is it's saying you're going to lose all your tabs here and you're going to lose your formatting, but that's exactly what we want to happen. So if you keep clicking OK, all right, it's saved. But now when you X out, you'll have some more saves and warnings to go through and just keep clicking save and OK and yes, and yes, over and over again. And now you've got your original document and your CSV. So if you open this, you would just see an unformatted one tab document with just the raw data, whatever was first in your in your tab list that you had in your Excel SS. So we're good. And you'll see it appear here. And we'll make a new Jupyter Notebook. So Python DSBB like this, and we can call it DSBB pandas. And I already have this, but I'll over write it. So rename. Okay, it's telling me it already exists. So I'm just going to do a one after it, but you shouldn't have to do that. And first thing we want to do is I'll comment everything I do starting with the hashtag. So import pandas, right? Import libraries, dependencies, we're, we're importing pandas and I'll give it an alias so as PD so when we reference it we can just use PD so do shift enter it should work for you I think pandas is pretty standard it will come with what we've already done setting up our anaconda environment if you don't have it though run your pip installer or go back to the conda prompt and install it there it, it doesn't matter you should only have to do this once but I think everyone's good anyway but you would do a pip install pandas if if you uh didn't get a successful run here on your first cell, but I'm not going to do that because we're good to go. So now we can read in the data and I'm going to show you this as if it were a long file path. We are writing our code in this notebook and it lives in the same place as the CSV file. So I wouldn't normally do this, but if we had a long file path and we were referencing a file that lived elsewhere, like in the cloud or on your computer, you would want to do this path variable and then put the entire path for where the file lives. But in this case, you could 
just go to your folder and see it's dsbb1 underscore life expectancy dot csv. So dsbb1 underscore life expectancy dot d dot csv. Sorry. Click enter and now we can do this pandas function pd read underscore csv and I'll and I, I don't need to link to the documentation actually just do pandas documentation in Google or pandas read CSV right you'll see a long list of pandas functions that are specific to the library that show you what the functions are and what arguments go in them uh, I reference it all the time it's, it's easy to forget um, but as you do more and more of this it'll start to stick to stick so do read.csv this is how this one works the first argument is your path so you can pop this directly in there, but I'm sure you're assuming, right, if this was a super long path, it would be much easier to just store it in this variable and then copy and paste it right in there. And that's actually all we need to do. There's other arguments like encoding equals. We won't get into that, it's out of scope, but there are more arguments you can put in here. We just wanna see the data, so shift enter. And Jupyter Notebook's pretty smart. It shows you your output already. And it will do that unless you put this into another variable. So let's just call it df equals. And that will store everything. This this data frame, that's what df, right, means, it's, which is basically just a clean table that's enumerated. So it's indexed 0 all the way to 3252. And then we can play with it later if we have it in this data frame. So df is pretty common. You can call it life expectancy underscore df which I'll do and I'll just run this again control enter and then down here you can display the data and I'll show you some functions that you can use to do that so head is how you see the first five rows or you can input a number in here say like 20 and you can see the first 20 rows so 0 to 19 is 20 Python works from 0 to 19 uh, when you do 20 so up to 20 not including um, you could do tail as well which will show you the first or the last five um, unless you have a number in which case it'll show you the last 20. Uh, you can also do this sample which i like to do because it's sometimes helpful to see the middle of the data set this will just show you a random sample of 20. so if i run it again i'll get a different sample of 20. so there's a quick video on how to pull in csv data using pandas in Python and Jupyter Notebook and then how to start to interact with the data but in the next couple videos here we'll likely continue with more pandas and show you how to do more inside of the library so stay tuned see you in the next one